Sports Headlines, brought to you by... Save so you can live your best life with your Jane Bank savings. You absolutely can. Jane Bank, we've helped you. Coming up in Primetime Sports Friday, Jamaica Scorpions record their first regional victory in 13 matches across formats and a local coach disgruntled over the treatment of women's football. Good evening to you. I'm Jordan Ford. I'll have all the details right after this break. Sports Headlines, brought to you by... Save so you can live your best life with your Jane Bank savings. You absolutely can. Jane Bank, we've helped you find a way. On this day in 2020, Jamaica's Rugby Sevens team defeated Portugal 22-19 in the World Rugby Sevens Challenger Series in Vina del Mar, Chile. This was the first time Jamaica was defeating a European nation in the sport of Rugby Sevens. It was also against the top 20 ranked team. Through Highway 2000 East West quicker and cheaper with a T tag. The time by Trans Jamaican Highway is 7:50. Welcome back now to Primetime Sports Friday. Bowling off with cricket for the first time in 13 matches across formats, the Jamaica Scorpions were able to secure a win after a thumping 10-wicket victory over the combined campuses and colleges team at Sabina Park on Friday. A long overdue win was finally achieved by the Jamaica Scorpions after a crushing 10-wicket victory over the combined campuses and colleges inside three days at Sabina Park on Friday. The Scorpions added 72 runs for their last six wickets to be dismissed for 331. Pete Salmon made 45 as 17-year-old leg spinner Zishan Matara bagged a career-best 7 for 108. A 24-run first innings deficit proved mountainous for the CCC, and in no time they stumbled to 34 for 4. The experienced Shamar Brooks 12 and first inning centre maker Jonathan Carter a duck, both back in the hut. Salmon then weaved his way to 4 for 12 to roll over the CCC for a mere 87 in 30.4 overs. Gordon Bryan supported with 3 for 19 and Abhijay Mansing 2 for 35. The Scorpions were then in need of 64 to get a first win in two years and a punishing display from Chadwick Walton led them there. The first inning Centurion slammed six fours and two sixes in an onslaught which lasted just under 40 minutes. Walton was supported by Carlos Brown who hit three fours to finish with 19. The emphatic win was confirmed with this six which was hammered in a disdainful manner by Walton. I think the way we go out there and, and, and play this week is the way that we want to play going forward. Um, I just want to commend Chadwick Qualton for a big first in knock. And um, young Carlos Brown as well. I think that partnership was crucial for us. And then, you know, Pete, I think Pete played very well, very well with the bat as well today. And the overall bowling unit was, was excellent. Well, I thought that um, our boys, you know, we, we played well in patches. Um, we didn't, um, I think we're still young. He's a young group. And we didn't command the, the sessions that we actually could have commanded. I thought that we, in the second innings, we batted very poorly. And, you know, we were in until that time, you know, um, getting bowled out for, for around 80 odd is, is not good enough. While there was relief about the victory, Scorpions captain Jermaine Blackwood was full of praise for 17 year old Matara. Young Matara, he likes spinning at 17 years old. You know, he, he did a fantastic job getting seven wickets in the first inning. And that really put us back in the game because it is a very good wicket for batting. And I thought that, you know, he bowled very well. Very good. Um, saw him bowl last week. And, um, you know, he was a bit inconsistent in that game against Barbados. But this game was very consistent. You know, I, I spoke to him last night. And um, it, his future looked very bright. Um, I think he bowled a nice length, good pace. Um, I think once he can continue, he's going to have a, a, a bright future in front of him. The Scorpions were handicapped on day three as fast bowler Marquino Mindley was unable to take the field due to injury. Well, I guess you have to talk to the physio about that, but um, he's not looking too good at the moment, but you have to do some work. Hopefully he can play next week, but we just have to see how it goes. The Jamaican franchise will take on the Barbados Pride in their next encounter starting next Wednesday at Sabina Park. 
Meanwhile, the Barbados Pride will head into next week's match against the Scorpions on the back of a defeat following a crushing nine-wicket loss to the Leeward Isle to the leaders, Winwood Allen's Volcanoes at Kensington Park. The Barbados Pride restarted the day at 72 for four, still trailing by 39, but folded for 126. Barbadian uh, Shamar Springer did the damage with a 4 for 44, along with support from Ryan John, 3 for 28. Set 17 for victory, the Volcanoes lost captain Johnny Melius, run out, before reaching 18 for 1. It was consecutive wins for the Volcanoes. The Trinidad and Tobago Red Force picked up their first win of the season after a six-wicket victory over the West Indies Academy at the Connery Sports Complex in St. Kitts. The Academy resumed the day at 84 for three and training by 82 runs and were dismissed for 224. Anderson Phillip and Brian Charles bagged four wickets apiece. Carlin Bowen Tuckett top scored for the Academy team with 46. And Becky Joseph and Akima Geist made 34 apiece. Set 58 for victory, the Red Force got to their victory at 60 for four. Meanwhile, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes are in control against the Guyana Harpy Eagles at Warner Park, also in St. Kitts. Set 459 for victory, the Harpy Eagles at Stumps were 67 for one. Tejnar and Chandapal, 40, and Raymond Perez, 20, will resume on the final day. Earlier, Mikhail Louis struck a second century in the match as he stroked 130 in the Hurricanes, 295 in their second innings. Casey Carty made 34 against Kevlin Anderson, 5 for 57. Now, with the current situation between the historic Women's World Cup team still unresolved, the JFF has been forced to seek talent elsewhere. However, one local coach says that many of the current crop of French players should have already been slowly integrated into the squad. Coach of the UWI women's team, Davian Megu, says that the dispute between the JFF and the on-strike reggae girls could have been less detrimental to the future of women's football in Jamaica. Megu says the current crop of young reggae girls should not be starting from scratch. Let's look at it this way. There must be succession planning. So remember this reggae girls team, the girls that are now on strike. Remember when they first went to the World Cup, that was a young team. No. A mature team went further. So what we have to look at is that some of those girls will still be on the back end. You now we're starting over. So for me, I, I believe it was more, it should have been more about incorporating these same girls that we're calling up now into the team. Megu says a properly run local league would provide local players with a doorway to the national program, but adds that the current selection criteria could discourage girls who ply their trade locally playing consistently where these local girls can showcase their talent i'm sure some of them would still get in to show to show because the reality you know even with the senior girls striking if the blueprint is saying we're going for girls that are playing professional league the reality is with the senior girls striking then the blueprint will remain the same they will just go for another set meanwhile the presidential hopeful raymond anderson believes he has the blueprint to end the jamaica women's premier league coaching concerns so we have to go right back to the grassroots program so if we want to build that the same premier league as a semi-pro professional just look across from the male side and um, we are encouraging and we're putting things in place to ensure that we have a mirror or something close to what the Premier League is looking like at this time. And um, from our administration, the RSA team directly looked at a department for women. And um, we will have that department very active, trying to get from grassroots up to Premier League, up to our, inter our national program in play. Both Megu and Anderson were speaking on Hits 92 FM's Sports Grill on Tuesday and Thursday, respectively. Christopher Scott, TVJ Sports. A record girl, Khadija Bunny Shaw, scored her 14th goal of the season to help Manchester City end Chelsea's 22-game unbeaten home run to move level on points at the top of the English Women's Super League. Now, in one of the blockbuster fixtures of the season, City proved they are real contenders as Shaw scored the only goal of the game. It was a rare home defeat for Chelsea, their first at Kings Meadow in 34 games. Only goal difference now separates the teams in the standings with eight league matches remaining until the conclusion of the campaign. At reggae boy, Damari Gray was on the score sheet for Al Etifak in their 2-0 win over Khalij, Al Khalij in the Saudi Pro League on Thursday. Gray first assisted Georgino Wijnaldum to give Al Etifak the lead in the 41st minute. And the Jamaican international then sealed the win in the 61st with this lovely strike.
and it was Gray's fourth goal and a third assist of the season. The league resumed on February 7 after a one-month break due to the Asia Cup, which culminated recently. TV Network will have live coverage of the match between Al Nasser and Al Fateh starting at 11.45 a.m. on Saturday. Now, Kingston College led the boys' standings after day one of the corporate area development meet at the Ashenheim Stadium at Jamaica College. KC currently have 146 points, with Calabar being second, 121 points, and Jamaica College third with 109 points. Woolmers lead on the girls' side with 150 points, just three ahead of Excelsior, who have 147, and Immaculate with 133 are in third. Woolmers won three of the four 100-meter races on the girls' side, led by Natrice East in Class 3. East clocked 11.67 seconds to win in Class 3, the fastest time of all the girls on the day. It was good. From a race, my coach gave me instructions on how to execute it, and I did just that. Woolmers were also winners of Class 2 through Tiana Marshall, winning in Class 1 in 12.21. Class 4 was won by St. Andrew High's Joanna Pennant in a personal best 12.68. On the boys' side, Kingston College's Yuri Lawrence Clark took Class 1 in a personal best equaling 10.55, with Excelsior's Malik Nugent taking Class 2 in a personal best 10.75. I mean, I feel incredible, you know. I've been putting in the work all season. I want me to come out here and win. It's a really great feeling, honestly. Because I've been faced with a lot of injuries over the years, you know. So, so me coming out here and win this is a really big deal for me. I train hard for this. I'm out there and execute my race properly. Ulmer's boys Mario Ross won the Class 3 event in 10.99, while Jamaica College's Darnell Douglas took Class 4 in 11.79. I was so surprised when I saw the time at her in 10.99 because I've been trying to run that time for from Caesar start. I know I finally run it, and I'm really surprised. I'm really happy. The meet concludes tomorrow. All right, let's head into a break now on Primetime Sports Friday. Stay with us. We come back with some more after this. Turn your big ticket credit card purchases into flexible, bite-sized monthly payments at a lower interest rate with Scotia Select Pay. The time by Scotia Bank is 8 to 1. <laughs> Welcome back now to Primetime Sports Friday. Let's continue with some athletics. Monroe College and Stets are the respective boys and girls leaders after the first day of the Western High School's Athletics Championships, which was held at Cornwall College on Thursday. Monroe lead the boys section with 116 points, ahead of Cornwall 101, defending champion Stets 93, William Nib 89.5, Herbert Morrison 31, and Sydney Pagan STEM Academy 29, rounding out the top six schools. Defending champions Stets are the leaders on the girls' side with 114 points. They're followed by Mount Alvernia 79, William Nib 55, Petersfield 48, Black River 30, and Sydney Pagan STEM Academy 20, rounding out the top six on the girls' side. Among the highlights was a record performance from Monroe's Javante Smith in the Class 2 boys' shot put. Smith set an outstanding new record of 18.21 meters to win the event. Dwight Fraser of Sydney Pagan was second with a personal best 15.81, while Monroe's Joshua Wright was third with 13.78 meters. The second and final day of competition will take place on Saturday at Stets. And Olympic champion Brianna Williams and World Championships medalist Akeem Blake will continue their preparations for the World Indoor Championships at the SW Isaac Henry Invitational Meet tomorrow. Williams, who is coming off a 7.25 seconds clocking at the Milrose Games on Sunday, is one of eight women listed to contest the 60 metres. World Under-20 Sprint Silver medalist Serena Cole, World Indoor Silver medalist Ronisha McGregor and Janique Brown are also listed to compete. Blake, who ran 6.55 seconds at the Milrose Games on Sunday, has also run 6.45 seconds at the New Balance Indoor Meet a week earlier uh, to become Jamaica's second fastest over 60 metres indoors. World Cup winner Taekwondo Tracy and Ramon Barneswell are also amongst the entrants for the men's 60. The 60 metres is one of a few new events on the schedule for this year's meet. We have brought back pole vault, okay, uh, which is 
a very exciting event. Um, as a matter of fact, the chairman of the board just said that he's coming special to, to watch the pole vault. Um, um, the 60 meters for the seniors, that's a, a new thing for us. And we hope that it will bring out the participants, being that's a world indoors championship year. Racing of a different kind now. Gary Sobrati's exciting American bred chestnut mare, Desert of Malibu, is the howling favorite for Saturday's feature, Reggae Month Trophy, for open allowance runners over the five straight course at Caymanus Park. Spencer Darlington has our racing preview. Desert of Malibu, the 3-5 to five antipost favorite, will be ridden for the first time by the informer Radish Roman, who replaces her customary rider and the former champion jockey Dane Dawkins. Had it not been for her disqualification on Mute Malde, Desert of Malibu would have been seeking her seventh victory from as many career starts come Saturday. Her imperious manner of victory in most of her races so far suggests that she will be a very tough nut to crack. She also goes well over the straight, having won her first two races over that distance. Her biggest threats appear to be Jason Acosta's speedball, Madeline's Sunshine, and Carl Anderson's consistent bagelding Emperor of the Cats. Madeline's Sunshine, to be ridden by joint leading rider Tevin Foster, is expected to be on the headlines alongside Emperor of the Cats with apprentice Richard Henry, and both are expected to make the frame. The lineup is completed by press conference with Roger Hewitt. Sensational move to be partnered by Dane Dawkins, Yellowstone, the Mount of Romario Spencer, and a gift from Ben to be guided by Paul Country Francis. This event is slated for 3.55 p.m., while first post for the nine-race card is noon. Spencer Darlington, TVJ Sports. Oh, the high-flying girls from St. Hughes High, cheerleading team, among or along with the young starlets from Iris Gelly Primary School, are still on cloud nine. This after their impressive showing at the just-concluded World School Cheerleading Championships in Orlando, Florida. The Swans of St. Hughes got the better of a number of high schools from the USA and Canada as they came back with silver and bronze medals. Coach of St. Hughes, Aldane Simpson, is a happy man. As a coach, I am a hundred plus a hundred multiplied by a hundred percent proud of them. They executed, they did their best, they represented extremely well in my opinion. They did exactly what I asked from them. Captain Kelly's Dawkins was elated with the team's performance. I think we did exceptionally well. That's the first time I actually felt good about a performance, especially since he was overseas. I'm really proud, proud of the girls, proud of myself, my coach. We did really well, and I'm really proud of it. Meanwhile, the young women from Iris Gelly punched above their weight class. The primary school team competed against athletes from various high schools from Canada and the USA. When the dust was settled, they finished fourth out of 64 competitors. Coach Daniel Brown says the girls represented themselves and the nation very well. Our performance last week was one of the most tremendous performances that we ever had as a set of youngsters. Um, we, out of our 54 high school squads, we came to place six. Um, we placed fourth in the nation. As beginners, that's, that's actually well for a set of primary school actually step up to the plate, show them how it, done, how it is done as Jamaicans. Captain of Iris Gelly, Alize Faisi, says they did their best after overcoming the initial jitters. I was feeling a little nervous, then we just brush it off and then we just keep on going. Indeed, the former national netball player Jodian French Kentish wants to continue the development of the sport locally by expanding the future Netballers Academy School Rally. French Kentish held her first staging of the rally recently, with eight high schools and four primary schools participating at the Scotiabank Sports Club. So the focus is on the youth, and if we have that foundation, then there is only. Um, 
things to build on, you know, so we need to set the foundation and so it is necessary for us to focus on the youth, the youth development of netball and it is looking pretty good so far. The progression has been excellent. The girls started, some of them started from inception, which was in 2022. So two years we have some of the girls here and the progression has been going very good so far and they are looking good and ready to take on a competition that we have coming up in March which is in Florida so we are doing the Junior Florida Classics we are hoping to enter that rally and give them some experience you know. Vaz Prep won the under 12 section beating Excelsior primary 4-1. St. Hughes won the under 16s and under 14s they beat Norman Manley 8-4 in the under 14 section while beating Gainstead 10-6 in the under 16s. Former Sunshine Girl Nardia Hansen coached St. Hughes under 14 and under 16 teams. I really wish this could be a yearly event for them because the girls want to play netball. They're out every Saturday morning, bright and early, and they really, really want to go further. They want to be at the stadium playing. So it's a very good um, rally this turnout. Uh, the turnout could have been better, needed more teams, but it's a good start. And that's where we'll end Primetime Sports Friday. Stay with us. We'll have the recap right after the break. Recapping the top stories, making Primetime Sports Friday for the first time in 13 matches across formats. The Jamaica Scorpions were able to secure a win after a thumping 10-wicket triumph over the combined campuses and colleges today at Sabina Park. And coach of the UWI women's football team, Davian Magu, is disgruntled over the treatment of the local women's football. Those were the top stories making Primetime Sports Friday. Don't move those. Sports commentary with Oral Tracy is next.